What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to LTH. My name is Abe and in this video I want to show you a fiend. And a fiend is a note taking application, a task portal manager, a whiteboarding application, and a presentation application all in one. Don't forget there are timestamps down below, but this is a fiend. So why I like a fiend is it's kind of this normal markdown style forward slash doc most thing, right? Where you can take any of these notes, do any of these bullet points, create any of these tables, but you have some really cool features like Kanban boards where you can assign tasks by opening them up to people, giving them an owner, adding progress, whatever. But the cool thing about it is this, essentially a huge limitless whiteboard that you can create and connect stuff to. So like the projects that I wanna use this for are for you guys and some future content coming soon, but I'm losing my organization with my ideas and my workflow and managing the tasks that they need to get done and in the order at which they need to be done. So I'm looking for a tool like this where I can create a Kanban board or a management tool, put the tasks down, connect them to information, and then I can like create these workflows as well as like journal and document in here like wiki style for myself or future employees if those projects get as big as I would hope they would. Um, but an awesome thing in here too is like, let's say you have something like a workflow, you can add them to your document by clicking this insert into page button. And then when we go back over to the page, we can now see that information is inserted wherever our cursor was or usually at the end of the page. And then we can drag it to wherever we want. And then the other really cool feature here is if we click the top right, we can create a presentation. And so we can present this information and like do a slideshow. So to debrief, to get our point across, to share information with team members or whatever, right? And so that's what I think super cool about this. You can dig into this more, go to their website, but if you're interested in this, um, you know, I think it's an awesome project. I'll show you one more thing real quick actually. Uh, like for instance, what I'm talking about with what I wanna use it for is a data center project I have coming up and I'll go into way more detail here in the future, but I need my tasks so I can create a list of tasks. If I've completed the task, any notes or information on the task I can put in here as well as link to like deeper pages with the information to accomplish that task. And so let me show you how to install a theme in this video. Okay, so what we're gonna do is log into our Proxmox environment and we have a couple things that need, you need to know. Essentially, you need at least 100 megabytes of RAM for every 1,000 documents with 1,000 words. And we are going to use a reverse proxy, the Nginx reverse proxy with DuckDNS and that is a free uh, certificate service and I have a video on that that you can find on our channel or on our website. So just keep that in mind. And here I'm going to set up this virtual machine, okay? And so I'm just gonna put in some information here. I'm gonna load my SSH keys into here, get everything ready, um, grab my Ubuntu. And so for that disk, like I was saying, for every 100 megs is you'll have 1,000 documents with 1,000 words. So I'm gonna do about 10 gigs. So I have room for the OS, Docker, as well as like images and stuff. Because if you're gonna do a lot of workflows, you are going to need that storage capacity for all those workflows and presentations and whatever. They recommend four cores of CPU as well as four gigs of RAM. So that's gonna be 4,096. And then I'm gonna get an IP over DHCP, skip DNS, skip confirm because our router will handle that for us automatically. And then when this is 200 okay, we'll start this up, I'll log in and we will get on with installing Athene and Docker. Okay, so now that Athene is right here and available for us to start, I'm gonna click start and click my Windows key, type CMD, click enter. I'm gonna make this big, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, for you real quick, but we're gonna log in with our root and our password that we set during installation. And I'm gonna do the command IPA just to get the IP of this box, okay. And let me add that to my notes here. Cool. 
And so we're going to log in here. We're going to do SSH root at the IP address. Yes to enter. And we're going to log in. So you might have to type in a password, but because I put in an SSH key, it just auto logged us in there as well. So what we're going to need to do is log into or download, excuse me, Docker. And so I'm just going to run these commands, which once again will be linked in the description at the first link on our website with all of these commands. So you can follow along or go at your own pace. And we're going to click enter to continue the installation. And then once that is done, we're going to install the extra Docker packages that we need to run a theme as intended. And so that's what this command is right here. And I'm going to click enter to continue that installation. And then you will see on our website, you can confirm the Docker as well as the compose version. If you would like, I'm just going to go ahead and confirm the compose version. Once this is done downloading with a nice little command, just so we know that it did download and it does work. All right, and there we go. We got a response for our Docker Compose version. And now we're getting into the part of actually installing a fiend. So a fiend recommends you create a directory, which is honestly just best practice for Docker containers in general. But we're gonna make a directory with the MKDIR a fiend directory. And then we're gonna change into that directory with CD a fiend. And we can see we've now changed into that folder. And so we're gonna download the latest version of a fiend with this Compose YML command. And then we are going to create a ENV file to change some parameters within the Affine Compose file. So I'll just show you this. In here, when you have these little brackets, these little squirrely brackets, this is essentially a variable that will be changed in your ENV file, and then it will input that into here, okay? So, when I go and I do nano.env, that is where you're gonna change these settings. So go ahead and set a database password as well if you'd like to. This is gonna be hosted locally um, and never available to the internet, so I'm not going to do that, although I know that is not best practice. But we're gonna go ahead and untab, or uncomment, excuse me, these two lines right here. And we're gonna change this bottom one to our domain name that we are going to set. So I'm gonna set mine to affine1.lthlabs.duckdns.org. Click Control X, the letter Y for yes, and enter to save to that file. And so now that that is done, we can actually start this. It's that quick. And so I'm gonna start this up and I'm going to add this entry into our Nginx proxy manager so we will access this website securely over HTTPS with a domain name instead of an IP address. So I'm gonna go into my Nginx proxy manager, click add a new proxy. At the top, I'm gonna to put in that same domain name and click enter so it actually like locks it in. And then I'm gonna grab the IP address and then this is going to be over port 3010 specifically is what uh, Affine uses. And we're going to en enable WebSockets. Go to the SSL tab. Click our wildcard SSL certificate so we can use that subdomain of Affine 1 and click save. And now we have the entry right here. We just need to wait for this to completely boot up before we can access it. But... Before we go to the root website, we actually need to go to the admin page. So in our case, we're going to use that domain name, but we're going to use forward slash admin. And so let me grab that right here. And okay, that has started. The migration's done. Everything's good. And so when I open up a new tab with that domain name, I do slash admin admin, we're going to be taken to the initial admin page. And so in here, we're going to click continue. And you can give this whatever your name is. And then we are going to type in our email address. And then I'm going to type in the password that I'm going to use. And we're going to click continue and we have logged in. So this is the admin portal. You can add users here. You can set up an SMTP server if you're going to do that, but that's past the scope of this video. And so now let's go to the root part of the website. 
through our link without that forward slash admin and we're here so you can see that we're already logged in but you can get started you can create your own documents so we can go down to like our folders you know create a new document in here rename this document uh, you can also create new workspaces with create a new workspace and so we're gonna create a new one test for video and then a fiend self hosted cloud because we are hosting this locally and then once we're in here you are able to go to your settings if you'd like just to show you a couple things real quick you can make this dark mode you can change certain things in your editor like the preferred uh, font page style what you want to start as whatever and then again you would just click this plus button created a new document just like that and then you can add stuff in here with this slash command and grab whatever you are trying to implement and then again you can go to your whiteboard you can do a connection whatever over here and then you know start drawing out your whiteboard stuff add text drawings whatever right tasks so you can dig into this as deep as you'd like to dig but i just wanted to show you installing that because i think this whiteboarding slash project management kanban board thing is super cool so thank you for watching my name is abe signing off with another video